So last week I made a video called Coding a Virus in Golang. That video is so far my highest grossing video yet. I would also like to thank all the new subscribers who came. Uh, so last week I created a virus that just generates like a crap ton of videos on and or files onto your computer. This new virus, however, is going to be a hundred times more deadly. We will be actually corrupting files to the point that they are unusable. So, how is this virus going to work, you may ask? So, every single file has code in it. Now, what do you think happens if I were to take every single file and remove the first line from it? 99% of the time, the code won't run properly. Why? Because the compiler is not going to have the values done properly. As a result, the files will be corrupted. At least that's the plan that we're going to be doing. So, um, when, I'm, when you're going to code out this virus that we're going to get to in a few moments, Make sure that this is not in your main directory and instead is in a file. Otherwise, it could corrupt your entire computer altogether. Okay, so currently I just created a, vi um, a directory called govirus2, and it currently has three files. My go file, uh, a text file that I'm going to be modifying, and a PDF file. This PDF is actually some of my math homework. I'm just going to show that to you guys right now. Uh, yeah, it's just like some simple math equations. and work that I did. So the idea is that I'm going to be corrupting this file and the text file. So I'm just going to rename this actually. Uh, test or homework PDF. Okay, that works. All right, so let's jump right into the code. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is actually go into our text file and make five lines and there's just going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just doing this so that when we actually run our virus, we're able to see changes within our text file. All right, the next thing we're going to do, uh, that's my PDF. Yeah, the next thing we're going to do is go into our Golang file. And as you can see, I've imported some libraries and these are the libraries that we're going to be using. So the first thing we're going to do, so the way we're going to write our code is so that it's modular. Why are we making a modular? So that it's one, easy to debug, and it's very good practice in the industry. So the first thing we're going to do is, first thing we're going to do is create a function called start. This function start will take in an argument, of a, which is going to be the file name. The file name we're going to get from our main function that we're going to deal with later. So what the file name is going to do is then read the file, or yeah, it's going to simply create a variable called path, and we're just going to use a declarative operator. And it's going to take in the file name, all right, then it's going to call upon another function called remove line. Remove line. We haven't made that function yet, but we're about to. Remove line is going to take in two um, arguments. It's going to take the path, which is our file name, and is going to also take in the line that we want removed. We're going to want the first line removed, so we're going to have to use the zero with index. Now let's create the function called remove line. So what, the first thing we're going to take is our path. So uh, path string. The next thing we're going to take in is our line number, which is an integer. Line number, which is an integer. Okay. So we're going to go, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to read the file, then we can modify it. So we're going to go file, comma, error, uh, declarative operator, and we're going to go uh, io.util, so ioutil.read file, and it's going to be the path. Okay, and also we're just going to want to check for some errors, so like if error is unequal to nil or something like that nil we're gonna panic error okay the next thing we're gonna want to do is the next thing we're gonna want to do is create our path so that it's able to be modified what i mean by that and i'm going to explain that in a moment so we're going to create two variables the first variable is going to be called info and we're just going to leave the other one with the dash because we don't want to use the error operator again you can if you want to, but I don't think it's necessary. And it's gonna take the path. Uh, yeah. The next thing we're gonna want to do is create is gonna is that we're gonna want to put the info in a mode. So we're gonna go info dot mode. All right. 
The next thing now what we're going to do is we're going to take our file and we're going to split it towards the first. Um, we're going to split the file. So we're going to call this variable array. Okay. And it's going to be equal to, I'm going to take the strings, the strings dot, and we're going to split it. Strings dot split. And we're going to split it from the file. So we're going to take the file name, which, yeah, we're going to just take the file, which we are reading right over here. And then what we're doing is we're just going to create a new line. So basically what we're just doing is we're taking the file and then we're just creating a new line. And that line is going to be the one that we're going to delete eventually. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to actually have to take, we're going to have to append our changes onto the file itself. So we're going to go array is equal to append. And it's going to be array. And it's going to be the, um, we're going to go from uh, zero to line number. So it's going to be like the, um, so all we're doing is we're simply taking so when we don't put in a number here, it automatically considers the last or the first index. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to find the, um, we're going to take the array. What was that? You're going to take the array and we're going to go from line number plus one. So since ours is zero, it's going to be one all the way to the end, which we'll just leave with a, we'll just leave it with the um, ellipse. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is finally write all of our changes into the file. So we can simply do this by using iotil.writefile file, and we're going to take in our path. All right, the next thing we're going to do is take our changes and convert them into a byte version. Why do we use bytes? Because all files are binary at the end of the day. Okay, and then we're going to take our and we're going to join the string. We're going to go strings.join dot join and it's going to be our array and then it's going to be the new line which is a slash n all right and we're also going to have to specify the mode which in our case will be writing because we're writing to the file but we still have to specify that okay now that we've gotten these two things ready now we need to create our main function what our main function is going to do is the most important it's going to a grab all the files then it's going to submit the files into the r start function. Uh, we also need to create um, an if statement that's going to check to see if uh, if the file is main.go because we don't want that to be, we, we, we want to ignore it. So without further ado, let's start our main function. OK, the first thing we're going to do is read out all of our files. So files comma error is equal or declarative operator is equal to io util dot read or actually want to read just the directory and it's going to be dot slash so anything inside of this go virus 2 that's what it's going to be if error is in equal in equal to nil is in equal to nil then we're going to have to uh, log that so or actually we just well, let's just use panic all right, uh, in fact, let's just remove log altogether. Okay, then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna loop through every single file and run it into our uh, the, the, these functions. So we're gonna go for blank comma f in, uh, in the range of files or range files. And now we're gonna just use the curly braces. Range files, yeah. So all we're doing right now is we're just looping through it. So we don't actually want to print out the uh, the error messages. So that's why we're just leaving it as a, a dash or an underscore. All right. The next thing we're going to want to do is just print out our files. Uh, we're just doing this for the sake of debugging and also so that I can show you guys something. All right. And we're just going to print out our name, f.name. So that's just the name of our file. The next thing we're going to do is to run an if statement and just to check to see if f.name is equal to equal to main.go, which is the, the file that we're working on right now, because we don't want our virus to affect us entirely. And okay, we're just gonna ignore the else statement, or we're gonna ignore everything else. And in our else statement, we're gonna simply write start, and it's gonna be the, uh, the name, 
what just happened? Uh, f dot f dot name. All right. Uh, yeah. So I think that's it. And I'm just gonna zoom out a bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna run this app now. Um, and okay. So I'm just gonna go go run main dot go. Yeah. So it shows us ds store homework dot pdf main dot go text dot txt. So let's go into our text.txt, and as you can see, we had a 1 here, but now all of a sudden it's disappeared. Now let's look at our PDF that we specif that I showed you guys earlier. So I'm just going to show it to you. Um, one sec, I'm actually just going to... It's code. All right, I'm just opening it up right now. Uh, okay. So, as you can see, this is the homework.pdf. Now, if we were to click this, we get an error. The file homework.pdf could not be opened. That's because we damaged the file. Now, you guys can try and run some other, like put any files you guys want. I suggest it be demi files and not like an actual application because that will be a very difficult thing to, uh, to debug. So, this virus is all only meant for educational purposes and it's not meant to harm someone. It's meant for education and entertainment only. Please do not try this um, on someone's computer because you can go to jail for this. Thank you guys for watching. Have a nice day.